Oh, this may have been a false alarm, everybody. Looks like these zebra were going to cross. Then I think they thought they saw or felt a crocodile. And no, I don't think they did. I think they stepped on a stone. One of them got a fright and they all got out. They've been thinking about crossing, though. And I think we're just going to watch them for the next two or three minutes and see if they don't find it within themselves to make the fateful decision as to whether to get across this water or not. They clearly are desperate to get to the other side. Quite why, no one is really sure. Now, just as a bit of background, this, of course, is the quintessential migration story here. We have a herd of zebra. They generally lead the migration, being the longer grass eaters, followed, of course, by the one and a half million wildebeest, some of whom, or many of whom, are down south in the Mara Triangle where we're operating now, and these zebra, part of the vanguard of that migration, are now crossing to and fro over the Mara River almost on a daily basis, sometimes more than once. And we watched a very large group come over this area very recently. Now we have a small group thinking about doing the same thing. Annie, you say this is so amazing. Annie, I have to agree with you. I think it's quite astonishing, really. And the temptation is to become inured to the trauma of what is going on here, the life and death struggle. You know, by the time you've watched your 10th wildebeest or 20th zebra be pulled under the surface by one of those massive crocodiles, uh, you get almost inured to it, but it really shouldn't be like that. It is an, an astonishing scene every time. And the uh, decision that the zebra make to cross the river shouldn't be lessened, and the fate that each of those poor prey animals suffers also shouldn't be underestimated. Yeah, Shelley, you've obviously been watching the other three crossings. All of them have happened over here. You say, is this the same deep crossing? Yep, today seems to be cul-de-sac's crossing day. We didn't have any here yesterday that we saw, but this seems to be the crossing that we're operating off today. And as you say, is it deep? Yes, it is. This is the same deep crossing that they've tried before. Well, Annie, well, this is exactly the thing. You say, wouldn't the risk be greater of crossing the river more than once, you know, on a daily basis or a weekly basis? Surely the risk outweighs the reward. I would have thought substantially so. But clearly there are enough zebra, or, you know, for them to suffer the losses, I guess, as a species. But at the same time, clearly for them, there is some tangible reward. They think they're going to get the other side. What it is, I don't know. I've been both sides. The other day I drove down to this crossing from the other side of the river and the grass looked pretty much exactly the same as it did this side. So I don't know what goes through their minds. I think what would definitely inspire them to go is if another stream came down behind them they'd almost certainly then just plunge into the water. All right, everyone, I don't think these chaps are going to go now. We'll give them one more 30-second gap. And if they don't, we'll sign off and then just keep watching. And if they decide to take the plunge, well, we'll certainly get hold of you. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, too much, too much risk. They've heard Annie, they've heeded her warning, and off they go. We'll see you when any developments happen.